Wow, things escalated quickly. everybody and welcome back to the channel. It's another chilly morning today. It's about half an hour before sunrise. I don't think there's going to be much of a sunrise today. It should be more or less an overcast day, but it's just a really nice winter morning. I have a cardinal singing behind me. I don't know if you can hear it, but just a beautiful song and it's the signs of really early early spring and speaking about spring before i head out i just wanted to mention i had a few of you comment that you're kind of struggling a bit in the winter time to get some photos and i think it's important to kind of shift your mindset a bit when it comes to winter time how i like to think about it is i don't base the success of an outing solely based on the photos that i get there's so many more things that you can be doing when you're out that doesn't even involve seeing the animal especially in the winter time there's really no secrets around if an animal walks through if a woodpecker is excavating a new cavity you look down you'll see bark on the ground if you see a bird feeding on seeds you'll see all the seeds on the ground so the snow really just reveals everything to you so for myself i feel like the winter time is just the perfect time to gather as much intel as you can before the spring and before the summertime when they eventually come around just because I want to be the most prepared possible. So one of the biggest benefits for the winter time, as you can see behind me, is that there's no foliage in the trees. So it makes it way easier to spot things. So two things that I really like to look out for are nest cavities. So any of them that look interesting to me. And the other thing that I'm looking out for are old nests. So a lot of the cup nesters, what happens in the winter time is that as it snows, the cup is actually gonna start filling with snow and it looks almost like a little snow cone. And then when everything starts to melt a little bit, you might have just a mild day or when it's melting for springtime, all the trees around it are gonna lose all the snow, but the cup nest usually retains it because it has better insulation. So what you're gonna see is pretty much when you look out into the vast open, just brownness of all the trees and twigs, you're just gonna see one little ball of snow and that's kind of an old nest that you can return to the next spring or next summertime. And if the pair returns, then you can possibly have an area where you can get some great nesting behavior. So those are two things that I'm looking out for when I'm out on pretty much every outing. And I'm just trying to keep a mental note of where those are and which areas look more appealing for me come the spring and summertime. So just a few tips before heading out that I wanted to share and uh, hopefully we can find something good. Stay tuned. All right, well, I just had about a dozen robins flush right next to me. You probably can't see it in the video, but on the side over here, there's actually an open water source. We often associate birds needing water in the summertime because it's so warm, but in the wintertime, it's equally as important because not only do they have to drink, but they absolutely have to bathe to maintain feather quality. If they don't have good feather quality, they won't be able to insulate more efficiently. So having an open water source like this is great. And right next to all the banks over here, I see a bunch of bird droppings, which are this bluish black color, which I know are pretty much all these shrubs all around me, which are common buckthorn. This is an invasive species and it's actually taking over everywhere. So although it's an issue here, it is really good for winter birds. They do like feeding on these berries. So whenever I do find a patch like this, I just take note and I try to visit it often because when the birds find the berries, they could wipe it out in a day or two if it's a big enough flock. This is great to know that it's it's here right next to a water source and I'm just gonna walk along the edge here because there's about a hundred meter stretch or so of open water and uh, the robins are kind of further down the trail now the chickadees are going up ahead
while things escalated quickly. There was about 30 or so robins and I guess when you have a group that big it kind of attracts other birds. And I heard a really high pitched whistle which I knew was a waxwing and two cedar waxwings flew down so I was pretty excited just at that because I haven't seen them that much this winter time. Waxwings are coming closer. So yeah, two cedar waxwings flew down and then right after about 40 bohemian waxwings came down as well and they started feeding on some of the berries and it's actually working out really well because the robins keep flushing the waxwings because they're trying to get either a better spot in the water or they're trying to get a better spot in the trees to access the berries. So what's nice is when I stand up to get a better position, the waxwings are aware of me. They kind of fly up a little bit higher but then once I just stop moving they just come right back down so it's kind of like I'm acting like a gigantic robin so that's my plan for the moment I'm gonna get some more photos and videos and I feel like I can hear more waxwings further down the other area because this group's like only about 30 or 40 individuals so I feel like that's kind of small for waxwings they're usually um, oh red poles flying over. Um, I usually see them in large groups like 100 or 200 individuals so I'm going to take another trail and see if I can possibly find the rest of the flock because this is a little bit small. Got kind of distracted on the way to the wax wings. Right in front of me is a pileated woodpecker totally stripping the bark off of a large tree and I don't know if it was the right decision to stop and not go for the rest of the flock of wax wings but right now I'm really enjoying this. It's just a beautiful large woodpecker. All right, well that was pretty amazing. The pileated woodpecker stayed for a while and everything was singing. There was a bunch of birds out and then suddenly it just went totally silent and you just kind of know at that point that there's a predator around and I couldn't see anything and everything kind of just froze. And then eventually I just turned around and I saw a Cooper's hawk perched on the wire right behind me. So everything after that was pretty quiet. They weren't really doing too much. So I decided to come back to where I saw the wax wings this morning and they're not here. So maybe I made a bad decision going for that pileated woodpecker, but I guess, you know, I just have to live with it. I'm happy that I got both in the same day. What I'll do now is just pretty much finish up my loop over here. If I get anything else really good, I'll interject here. But uh, if I don't, enjoy the photos and videos from today and I'll see you in the next video. Happy birding.